Good morning once again. This is New Day and this is the segment that gives you the chance to uh, know exactly what those asking for your mandate intend to do for you and why you should give them your mandate. This is Plus 275 from the Election Command Center at TV3 here and we're assuring you that we're the specialists and we'll get to you exactly what we will need to know. To the Upper West region this morning, uh, that constituency is from the uh, Dafiama Bushie Isa district, and that district has a population of about 32,000 plus. It's a very key district because the NDC has dominated it, and the NPP this time intends to uh, take the seat from the ruling NDC. Exactly how they intend to do it this morning, we'll hear that. But the NDC isn't just giving up on that seat. It says that it will continue to sit on that seat and how they intend to do it again this morning, we get the opportunity to do that. Now, carved out of the uh, Nadoli Kaliuk uh, district, this constituency is one that will be keen to watch ahead of December 2016. My guests this morning are from the camp of the NDC and the NPP and they will tell us exactly why they are asking for the mandate of the people of the Dafiama Bushi Isa constituency of the Upper West region. Now from the NDC is a man who says, well, this time the NDC isn't taking chances at all. They are ready uh, to again continue sitting on that seat. And he uh, actually is in the studio and will be talking to us very soon. Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sandari is representing the NDC in the Dafiama Busie Isa constituency of the Upper West region. Uh, Sebastian, I'm grateful for your time this morning. Thank you very much, Bright, mm. and greetings. Right. From the people of the famous Buse is a constituency. Mm. I am grateful. And how are they receiving you? Great. And the message is simple. The message is for NDC, John Derman Mahama, and Dr. Sebastian Sandare Honorable. I'm grateful. Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sandare is the NDC candidate for the Dafia Mabushi Isa constituency of the Upper West region. Now, from the camp of the NPP, of course, the party says that it is uh, the year that is talking about change. And so they're asking the constituent to uh, ensure that they vote the NPP into office in that constituency. Lawyer Luwanga S. Bagunluri is from the camp of the NPP and he's asking for the mandate of the people of the constituency. Lawyer, grateful uh, you are here with us this morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Bright. Mm. And how are the everyone. people there uh, of the constituency receiving you? Very great, excellent, and I'm with them. The wind of change is what the people of Dafima Busie is a constituency are looking for. Mm. The change is definitely going to come in the whole of Ghana and Dafima Busie is a constituency will not be left out. They are poised to bring Nana Akufado and lawyer Luanga Bogonduri to the seat of government this time around 2016, come December 7th, inshallah. Mm, I am grateful for Thank you very much. Uh, your time here, the gentlemen, this morning. Now, uh, this is uh, the platform that gives you the chance to talk to your constituents, and we're sending out a signal to the rest of the world that it is a battle of ideas. We send out a signal to the rest of Ghana that it's a battle of ideas, not that of war. Before we start our conversation, uh, it's going to be a question and answer session. In two minutes, uh, you can answer questions that I'll put it to you. If your contender makes a statement, you can react to it. You have your chance, opportunity, in fact, uh, to react to whatever statement that uh, he will uh, make. But before we start, give yourself a handshake and let your constituents see that you're only engaging in a battle of ideas from the uh, Dafiama Bushi Isa constituency of the Upper West region. Once again, welcome. This is Plus 275. The conversation begins right away. Let me start with you, Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sandari of the NDC. Now, uh, your party has been on the seat for some time and suggesting that indeed you have found out what that constituency needs and that is the reason why you want them to give you their mandate to represent them in Parliament. So in two minutes, share with me the challenges of the Dafiama Bushie Isa constituency and why you think that you are the best person to lead that constituency to the Parliament of Ghana on December 7, 2016. Two minutes, starting now. Right, thank you very much, Bride. Um, the people of Dafima Buse Isa has decided that there will be no change. No change for the presidency, no change 
for the parliamentary because it's always NDC and NDC will continue to be at the presidency and at the parliamentary seat. Now, my government is in power. And now we're talking more about the achievements of the government in the Fiamma Busei Issa constituency and little uh, on the challenges. Talk about health and we, the government, through His Excellency John Raman Mahama, has ensured that we have 14 chip compounds to serve the people. We've also ensured that there are five health centers manned by competent um, health service personnel. And the challenge, however, is that the lack of a district hospital is, is affecting service delivery. But the president, the NDC government, has promised the people a district hospital. Also, in terms of education, about 90 percent of the communities have access to basic education, thanks to the NDC and thanks to His Excellency John Dramane Mahama. The challenges on education has to do with um, providing another um, senior high community day school, which the President has promised, and also to ensure that we have enough teachers to teach and also improve on ICT. On agriculture, a lot has been done for the people since agriculture forms about 98% of the economy. 30 more seconds. Right. And therefore, the challenge is to ensure that the people are provided with mechanized form of um, farming to ensure that food is available for the people. I'm grateful. Uh, Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sandari of the NDC there talking about uh, the achievements of the NDC government in the Dafiama Bushi Isa constituency. The reason why he's asking again that uh, he be made the man to represent that constituency in parliament. Now, he's not having all that easy and won't be allowed to go alone. The NPP says, no, uh, we can perform better. And so in the person of lawyer Luanga Bagonluri, uh, they want him, rather, to represent that constituency in Parliament. He's here this morning. Uh, lawyer uh, Bagun Luri, let me start from here. Your contender says that for him, the achievement of his party is what he wants to talk about, and that is why he thinks the people uh, will push him to go to Parliament. For you, uh, that your party has not been in power, what is it that you're relying on to convince the people of the constituency to elect you as their representative? In two minutes, talk to me about this. Thank you, Mr. Bright. I'll first of all say good morning to the good people of the Femme Busse Issa constituency. The good people of the constituency, DBI, have realized that the NDC government, in terms of their promises to the good people of districts, have taken them for a ride. They have not fulfilled any of the things they promised them for which the good people of the constituency elected the various parliamentary candidates to represent the constituency. I will start with education. In education, the constituency has only one senior high school located at Dafiama, which is very, very insufficient for the teeming and growing population of those who live there, junior high school. Doctor has said that we have five clinics. It's the only district or the only constituency that hasn't got a district hospital nor a polyclinic. We don't have a single medical doctor there. Neither do we have a single medical practitioner to take care of the sick and needy in the constituency. All the clinics are just referral clinics. So the people have realized that health is very paramount. Without health, you cannot live. For that reason, they have decided that this year they will change for the better. The wind of change that is coming is blowing to the whole of Ghana mm. and we will not be left out. When we go back to agriculture, the, the constituency is basically an agricultural place. Farming is predominant the occupation of many of the people. The party NDC has neglected the agricultural needs of the people. Farming inputs are not provided for them. Tractor services are non-existent. 
dams and irrigations are not there when the land is there for sections. The few dugouts that have been done by the previous government are non-performing. In the dry season, from December onwards, they dry up. Farmers cannot do anything. In terms of commerce, the district thrives on the revenue or the internal generated revenue from the various markets in the constituency. Our biggest or our big markets located in Fiang, Busi, Dafiema, Esa, Kware, and Kajipiri. These markets have been neglected. The district assembly has done nothing to uplift these markets where we drive our revenues from. So the people have said that enough is enough. The NDC has taken us for a ride. They have deceived us for far too long. Let us change and see. After all, we say in our local parliament that Baba Kuyera Dabuyin, Abanada, you don't enter into only one market. And no. So they have entered into the NDC market. They will leave it, come 2016, December 7th, and enter into the MPP government of Nana Akufado and lawyer Luanga Bagonluri for the betterment of the constituents. Mm, I am grateful, lawyer Luanga Bagonluri of the NPP there, asking for the mandate of the people of the Dafiama Busie Issa constituency there. Of course, he's raised very pertinent issues. Quickly, let me get uh, Honorable Dr. Sebastian uh, Sandari to react to them. Now, he says that the things that you promised, you have not done them. And so, listen, the people are leaving your camp to the camp of the NPP. You can react to that. Right, thanks very much. You can all see, my people watching, that my college is not in touch with the constituency. He talked about education, and truly, we can all see that there is no community in the Femme Buseisa without a primary or junior high. Talking about senior high, we have three senior high. Um, schools. All right. So he says you have only one at Dafiama. No, he's telling lies. There are three There's senior high schools. Yes. Are they all public schools? They are. Three public senior high schools. Yes, but the I'll president. Get to read. Move, move the, on. The, the NBC has promised another senior high, which will come very soon. In terms of agriculture, they are tractors, and like I have said, I am an honourable assembly member, and our strategic plan. We are mechanizing agri. There are inputs, but the challenge is that agriculture in the Fema Buse is, is solely household based. And to move that, we have to support farmers with inputs to form groups so that we can get them credit. In terms of health, the people are not neglected. They have health centers, they have church compounds. And doctors, including me, move to that constituency to provide health service for the people. And he knows that in his own village, there's a clinic. But of course, the Fiamma Buse is I was cowed off of Nadoli, and the district hospital was at Nadoli. But the government has promised that the people of the Fiamma Buse is will get a district hospital. I'm grateful, uh, Dr. Sebastian uh, Sindari. But let me quickly go to lawyer uh, Luanga Bagunluri and then let's clear this one. Uh, lawyer, he suggests that there are three senior high schools. Right or wrong? Very, very wrong. Unless and uh, until he mentioned those senior high schools to us here. I know of the famous senior high school, mm. the only senior high school we have in the constituency. The day schools that were promised by His Excellency John Draman and Mama for every constituency for every district in our constituency is non-existent right they have never cut the sword for the construction of so you only know of dafiyama senior high school, high school uh, uh, dr sandari where are the other two senior high schools you, you talk about we have the st Teresa's vocational school also in dafiyama mm. and we have the leadership the youth leadership training center in isa okay. so these make them three three all yes. right uh, lawyer Luanga, are you aware of these institutions I said senior high schools. We have one senior high school at Dafiama. The leadership and vocational schools he has mentioned at ISA. Mm. We are going to come there. For the past two years, the ISA Leadership Institute has not had intake apart from last year. It's a non-existent school. It's striving for sustenance. The vocational school he talks about in Dafiama, 
it's a Catholic vocational school. Right. That has been established. It's not a senior high school. Okay. It's not a senior high school. Let us get it on Except record. that it, it, it takes students after junior high school. It takes students after That's junior high school. That's the only thing that perhaps uh, even makes it, takes, it, uh, it takes closer students, to a senior high school. It takes students, females, who have not even completed junior high school successfully. All right. It's a missionary establishment by the Reverend Sisters. I'm grateful. Yes. I'm grateful. For, I'm grateful for your time. Uh, lawyer Luanga Bagon Luri is representing the NPP in the Dafiama Busie Isa constituency. Uh, Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sangdari is representing the NDC in that same constituency. They're asking for your mandate. And this is plus 275. We're getting them uh, the chance to tell you, viewers, and their constituents what they intend to do when giving the mandate. Uh, to represent uh, them in Parliament. Let's move on our conversation to another level. I'm coming to you, uh, lawyer Luanga Bagonluri. Uh, what kind of leadership are you proposing uh, to provide when giving the mandate to become the Member of Parliament? Looking at the challenges you have in your constituency. Two minutes, you can start. Lawyer Luanga S. Bagonluri and the MPP government to be led by His Excellency to be Nana Kufado, come December 7th, are going to have a people-centered, oriented leadership, where decisions will emanate from the people to the national level for the holistic development of the constituency. We are going to engage all opinion leaders within the constituency, the paramount chiefs, divisional chiefs, queen mothers, assembly men and assembly women, market women, farmers, and what have you, we are going to organize what we call a quarterly discussion at the various electoral areas or at the various parliaments, where we will get to know the decisions or the inclinations or the feeling of the people at the very level and will now transcend it into the district assembly where the decisions that are going to be arrived at this assembly will come from the people. I, Luanga Bogonuri, and with my party, have seen the plight of the people, and we think that decisions coming from top to the down will not help us. We will, we will generate those decisions and ideas from the bottom. Every paramount chief in that constituency, Busi, Isa, Dafiema, and I'm currently Kajipiri, which has been elevated into a paramountcy, would form what we call a paramount caucus where they would decide and sit down and come out with their problems and as the MP elect, I would visit them on a quarterly basis, we will sit down and strategize and see how we are going to move the constituency and the district forward. You see, our people have a problem in the constituency in that the NDC government for the past years that they have been on the seat as parliamentary candidates bring decisions down from Accra to them. Those decisions become non-implementable. Even they do not see to the needs of the people. The MP does not visit the assembly, even during assembly sessions once in a while. All the ideas are going to be from the people to Accra. And you see, as a lawyer, our main function in Parliament will be to legislate. We will use that power and look for sponsorship from donors to come down to our agricultural area to, um, to help in the development of our people. Mm. You see, doctor who is here with me would best understand that when we come to power, we will use him as a doctor in one of our hospitals, the district hospital, where his service will be most needed. But for what we are going to do as NPP, Nana Kufado said, we are going to provide free junior high school to free senior high school and everybody within the constituency would have to go to school. Our people mm. are naturally very, very poor okay. and they need time All and right. money and energy. I am grateful. Lawyer Luanga Bogon Luri of the NPP. But I'm still staying with you before I go to Do uh, Dr. Uh, Sandari because uh, you mentioned that for you, the, a people-centered approach is what you're going to use. You're suggesting, for instance, that what is currently happening there is that decisions are taken at the center and brought down. How has this affected development in the Fiamma, Busie Isa constituency? Truly, Mr. Bride, there is no development in that constituency. That development is very stagnant. That constituency is backward as compared to other um, constituencies. They have neglected the constituency. Our education is poor. 
There are no health facilities. Agriculture is very low. Health is down. The people are crying simply for a change. Because decisions are taken from the top, top and, and brought come, down. And they are non implementable. They do not originate from the people. The assembly, for which Dr. Sandari is a member of the assembly anyway, when they go to assembly, we don't see what the assembly does for the various areas. Quite recently, my people in Busse even had to call the DC agently to do something about our market in Busse because the market, which is the, which is the bane of the district assembly, has seen no upliftment where all infrastructure, where all internal revenue is driven from. The market at Kajipiri has seen nothing, no infrastructure development. The market at where? At Pare, nothing. The market at Fien, nothing. Even the Defiemen market, where Dr. Hills from, no infrastructure development. But yet, on every market day, you find the district assembly going to take toll from these poor farmers. Mm. And what they use the money for, we in the district, we don't know. I see. We don't know. That is the bane. And we are thinking that when we sit down and get our revenue collectors from within, they will collect this money and we will decide what to do with the money in the development of the district. I'm grateful. I am grateful. Lawyer Luanga uh, Bugunluri of the NPP. Uh, Dr. Uh, Sandari, now you can react to the issues he's raised. He's suggesting that because uh, decisions were taken from the top or the center and brought down to the people, these decisions, these programs are not implementable. And that is why development has retarded in the Dafiama. Busse is a constituency. React to that before you go ahead to tell me the kind of leadership you will provide given the mandate. Right. Thank you very much. I think my colleague, like I've said, is not in touch with the Fema Busse is a constituency. This is the second time you're saying that. Right. And I, I'm telling the people know he's not in touch because development starts at the grassroots level, not from the top. At the assembly level, the developmental plans are taken and then development partners including the government use the plans of the assembly to bring what the people need and he has never even bothered to cross check the plans of the district assembly and to say that the honorable mp does not visit the assembly he's telling lies and also to say that the people do not have health facilities i have told him several times that what we lack is a district hospital. But development is a process. The district was... You're considering there are some challenges with health. The only challenge is that as a district, we don't have a district hospital. But we were created in 2012. And a district that was created in 2012, at least we need some process to get us a district hospital. Talking about the markets, I can't remember the last time he's gone to Busse Market. Work has been done there, and in fact, the other uh, markets work are ongoing to ensure that the people have places to trade. And indeed, what he's saying is that the Honorable DC, who is from Busse, you know, he hasn't consulted him. And I think that he cannot solve the, pe the problem of Busse more than the Honorable DC. So he is not in touch. He doesn't even ask or solicit for the needs of the people. Because I know, as an assemblyman, we have finished the strategic development plan of the assembly. And he has never bothered. What, is, what, is, a level, what is the level of uh, uh, the project of the Boucher market? What exactly has been done on the market? You are an assembly member of the district. Yes. What is the state of the market as you speak now? Your people are watching you. Yes. And the people know that Busse Market, they have con constructed sheds. One of them is, diff is, is, is a new one. And even when he goes, that's where he holds his meetings. Oh, I see. So why would you la, say la, that la, there's la, no Luanga, So you've been holding your no. meetings there. Those sheds he's talking about were constructed before. 2012 and the market since 2012 has seen no infrastructure change okay so after 2012 uh, nothing has been done about it nothing but he's suggesting that uh, the shares have been constructed and the markets in those shares shape. were constructed before 
2012, and since 2010, nothing has been done about it. It was when we, the people of the area, got up in a change that they brought gravel, seven tons of gravel, to come and put on the road leading into the entrance of the market. Is that what you're talking about? Infrastructure development? Dr. Sandari, you, you, you can answer that. Yes. Like I have said, he doesn't really know the Busse market. He's not seen the gravel? He's not seen. He's not seen. There's no gravel there. I see. Where he's talking about is I, where I has said been constructed. When we agitated that they brought seven tons of gravel and came and kept it at the entrance and, and brought it into the market, making the entrance of the market, who used to be flooded anytime it rains, a little bit more trouble into the market. Apart from that, nothing has been done at the Busse market. Okay, Dr. Sandari, right. please go on. Good. He's here talking about nothing has been done, nothing has been done, when he knows there's transformation going on in the constituency. MPP was in power for good eight years, from 2000 to 2008. He should mention one major project that N the MPP did for the people of the Femme Busse. Your constituency had a, 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 a member of parliament from your, your party then? Yes, NDC. All right. But MPP was in was power. In power. Yes. With all these transformations that he hasn't seen, what did they do to transform the lives of the people? So go ahead and tell me, Dr. Sandari, now what kind of leadership then are you providing from what you just told us? The kind of leadership that will ensure that the Fiamma Bouchier Issa constituency gets the kind of development that your constituents need. Right. The Fiamma Bouchier Issa like I've said, has been transformed. The major roads in the constituency are being worked upon. And that's why he can afford to drive a tundra on those roads. Now, talking about leadership. Drive a tundra because <laughs> the roads are, are, are very poor. I'm sure that's what you're very poor. And say. I need a very motorable and rugged vehicle. Right. That's not true. Yes, that's why I drive that's a, not true. I don't drive a tundra. Let me anyway, go let me I go don't on. drive a tundra. Let me go. Let me put you on record. Okay. I don't drive a tundra. Let me, let me, let me, I drive a Ford. Oh, okay. Lord, 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 you, you drive a Ford, not yeah, a tundra. Let me go. go on. Okay, all right. Dr. Sebastian, please go. Right. You see, leadership is not only when you go to parliament. And that is where this debate will go to. As Honorable Dr. Sandari, I have been in touch with my people. Since 2008, I have always gone home to provide health services from my own coffers to the people of the FEMA, Busse Issa. I support students in their education. He mentioned that the children are poor. I have produced about 100 students, people from healthcare to senior high to the tertiary level. And they are proud of me, even though I haven't yet gone to parliament. And in the Femme Busse Issa, that is what the people are looking for. Not that you wait when you go to parliament, then you help the people. You start helping the people before you get there. And in his own community, will I advocated for them to construct the chips compound. And when it was being launched, I donated BP apparatus, a bicycle, mobile phone. Now when he goes home, that is the clinic he will visit if he has anything, uh, any medical problem. And that cuts across the entire constituency. And the people know what I have done. So like I have said, NDC has always produced a humble candidate, a candidate that listens to the people, the candidate that involves the people in decision making, and the candidate that understands the people. By that virtue, you, you will start from the unit committee level, get to assembly level, become a presiding member, like I'm sitting. When you get to a presiding member, then the people know that you understand them. Then they give you the mandate to become an MP. So I would provide all inclusive leadership. Leadership that involves the people in decision making. I'm grateful. Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sandari of the NDC. Luanga, a quick reaction on that before we move on briefly in just yes. about 30 seconds. Dr. Sandari is not being honest and fair mm. in his expose about the things he, he has been able to do. 
It is true he's a doctor. Mm. It is also true that he's a he, medical doctor. A medical doctor, right. yes. Like how I'm a legal practitioner. Mm. That it, he provides health services for his people in the firma. But it's not true he provides health services for the people of the Dafima Buse Isa constituency. He only went to Kajipedi Zone last year to provide a health outreach and a talk. Two, to say that through your instrumentality, a cheese compound was launched in my own village. It lies in, in your mouth. We had an abled and energetic assemblyman, Matthew Brimer, through his instrumentality and then the village caucus. My village has a lot of literates and educator one. We have produced a data general organic health service before. Through his instrumentality, Dr. Sori, mm. and the good people of Olo, we lobbied in the assembly and we were part of those that the chief compound were to provide it for. So it's not through your instrumentality. It is also true that you donated um, equipment to equipment. the center. Let me also put it on record that I, I have also donated a lot of things that I cannot tell. It's my village. Okay. So what I do there is for the development of myself and my community as a whole. Okay. I'm grateful. Luanga Bagonluri of the yeah. MPP. Yeah. Uh, yes. there, uh, Honorable Dr. Sebastian Santari of the NDC. And the two main contenders on uh, that, uh, asking for the mandate of the people of that constituency to represent them in Parliament. Uh, this morning on Plus 275, they're sharing their, uh, how they intend to uh, operate, why the people should give them uh, their mandate, and how best they can serve the people of that constituency on the show. And uh, let's move on because we are getting ready to wrap up our conversation. And one key thing thing from uh, the uh, submissions you're making is the work relationship between perhaps the member of parliament, the assembly, and the, the uh, traditional authorities. In the Dafema Busie uh, Isa constituency, how well is this uh, being used to bring development? Let me start with you. Uh, Dr. Sandar, you are an assembly member. Mm -hmm. The working relationship between the assembly, traditional authorities, and development partners. How do you intend to use this in bringing development to the constituency. This one, uh, just one minute, and then we'll move on to your contender, lawyer Luanga. Thank you very much. We are already doing that. Like I said, at the assembly level, we call it developmental issues, starting from the grassroots level. The urban councils, area councils, involves the chiefs and the people and stakeholders. And from this level, we get to the assembly. There's no friction amongst There's them. no friction. There is no friction at all. And that is why, like I've said, if you come to Dafiema Buse, a sad district, a district that was created in 2012, you will marvel with the level of development in that constituency. I'm grateful. La Luanga, the assembly, traditional authorities, development partners, you perhaps sit outside government. Do you see them work in, in closer collaboration, or perhaps you see some friction resulting in uh, uh, development being retarded in the constituency. Mr. Bright, you see, every paramount chief is an integral part of the district assembly. And when we come to power, Nana Kufado and the MPP with Lawyer Luanga, we would facilitate the cooperation enhancement of all our parliament chiefs with the district assembly where they where they will talk about the development of their various parliaments if i tell that look in that whole constituency our roads are very bad almost trouble we don't have a single tar road the only road which we talk of tar is on doom to the which is just four kilometers which was constructed in 26 by a benevolent person and it ended at the entrance of Dafiema. The road from Wa through to Fien to Busi, mm. it's a trunk road. All right. It's been graveled. Nothing. The road from Fien to Adisa capital, Isa, is very bad in a deplorable state. Not that. The road from Isa up to Kajipiri, Mr. Bright, is very bad. You cannot go there anytime it rains. The road from Isa to Tabiese up to Gunua is almost trouble. They have just gone there to put a greater there last week. Even the motor cannot pass there. Mm. The, the constituency is deprived. So virtually every road is in bad state in the, the constituency. The constituency is deprived. The All constituency right. is almost trouble. We need the MPP in government and we need Lawyer Luanga to liaise with the various chiefs, opinion leaders, and NGOs to see how we're able to develop 
this constituency. I'm grateful. Luang Bagon Luri of the NPP and Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sundari of the NDC. Let's get ready to wrap up our conversation. In one minute, you're going to sum up everything. Uh, doctor, doctor, do you have any reaction? Yes, I do. Just five seconds. Yes. I have always said that he's not in touch with the community. The roads, as he has mentioned, work is currently ongoing. On all the roads he mentioned? On all the roads. The, the Wa Fien Buse, the contractor, is on site. As you were coming the this Fien, morning, the contractor was on site. I'm time. telling you, you can visit, and he from here should go and visit. The Guonwa Sazier Road, contractor is on site, on site, and it will be tired. The Are Fien, you on site because the, of the elections? The or Fien, no, no, no. Side? No, no, no. I'm telling you. Graveling and reshaping is you, not a tar road. Will you allow me? Graveling and reshaping are different things. All right. I am, I am talking, talking about the roads being tarred and being more trouble. Mm. None of the roads so, in the constituency is tarred. Okay. And putting right, a grader there. Okay. Dr. Sandar, you, you go the one he, on the floor. He, he, sorry, he just came in. You go on. Right. Go on. I am saying that the three roads that he has mentioned work is ongoing. Work to I, tar it or they're just graveling. Work to tar it. Okay. And what I have said is I'm that grateful. he doesn't understand the constituency. I'm grateful. Dr. S uh, Sandar, I'm grateful. In just one minute, sum up everything that you've uh, told your constituent in your local dialect, any of them. Uh, one minute, tell them why you're the best person to represent them in parliament. Uh, Dr. Sandari, let me start with you. Just one minute. So, in you deme the female Busile Isala Aning, Nubaza Ankara, Neka Barka, Mpureza, Yamanan ye NDC O Karatenson, one a yellow yara, Ansen Karen and Voti, Aku NDC. Ansen Kar Voti, Aku, John Dramani Mahama, a Votiku, Honorable Doctor Sandare, Onanta Sikrumarum, Oba Izumara. In Kumazri, mm. Chega Parliament. Bonana ire a constituency. Tezanu Katene and Beltemine, a depion, a ku MPP. Tenaloga Puri. Mm. Mansoro, Kaiza Asun. Karinyo right. NDC. Anyok John Draman Mahama. Right. Anyok Doctor. Sebastian Sandare. Anyok NDC. Adumar. Peke Keke. I am grateful. I am grateful, Doctor Aitendare. Uh, La Luanga, your time now. One minute. Mbamine, Mamine, Busile, Esala, Kajipire, Dafiama. A parlons tout l'un. A tambo te d'angoncier. Ancien Katina la carte à tambo. Y a carré mal. A casier tenant zinzini. Tchette à tambo. Casier en soma kobo kahonga. Kabien hombe. Casier en soma. En soren. Y a deco. M pipi. Nana Kufado, Animan, Lawyer, Luanga, Bogondori. In Combele, in this belletting, a coincidence in a belte, Timbe Purin. Nana Kufado, Animan, Lawyer, Luanga. The other thing was Saku B school, and a year free. SSB school, and a year free. Pampana Yanya, Ye Biman Barre, Junior High School, Aga, Senior High. Kuno Yibe Naga University, be an Aga nurse and be an Aga teacher training, or control yoga. All right, Ama Yapiana. All right. Yes, so can I not go for the man lawyer longer with parliament? I'm Miss Long, I'm Mavi Balne Luanga. Okay, I'm a voter. I vote my Luanga. Bring it to an end. I'm grateful, lawyer. Thank you. I'm grateful. Lua Luanga S. Bagunluri is the man representing the NPP in the Dafiema Busi Isa constituency of the Upper uh, West Region. Honorable Dr. Sebastian Sangdari is representing the NDC in that same constituency and they're asking for uh, your mandate. And you have listened to them and I'm sure you have taken your decision. Gentlemen, we're grateful for your time. Another handshake, a hug uh, to show your constituent that you're only uh, engaging in a battle of ideas. We're grateful for your time once again for. Uh, He's my younger brother. Yes. He is. He is. Younger brother. Grateful. Younger brother. We're grateful. Oh, no, he's my younger brother. <laughs> We're grateful for your time once again, and we wish you well. We hope to see you here again, and wish you all the best uh, ahead of December uh, 7. Those of you who watched us from your homes, we're grateful, and from your offices, we're also grateful. You stay there. This is Election Command Center. Plus 275 is a show. Tuesdays, Thursdays, after 8 o'clock, you'll join us, have the debate. Good morning once again.